top six best GPU for gaming in 2023. Hello guys, today in this video, we are going to help you to find out the best GPU for gaming and market. I made this list based on my personal opinion and I tried to list them based on their quality, durability, customer review, and more. If you want to see their price and find out more information about them, you can check our links in the description below. And like, comment, share this video, subscribe our channel. Thank you. Number six, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. There's nothing subtle about NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card. It's a hulking great lump of a pixel pusher. And while there are some extra curves added to what could otherwise look like a respin of the RTX 3090 shroud, it still has that novelty graphics card aesthetic. It looks like some semi-satirical plastic model made up to skewer GPU makers for the ever-increasing size of their cards. But it's no model, and it's no moon. This is the vein mart for the entire RTX 40 series GPU generation and our first taste of the new Ada Loveless architecture. On the one hand, it's a hell of an introduction to the sort of extreme performance Ada can deliver when given a long leash, and on the other, a slightly toned def released in light of a global economic crisis that makes launching a graphics card for a tight, very loaded minority of gamers feel a bit off. But we can't ignore it for this guide to the best GPUs around simply because, as it stands today, there's no alternative to the RTX 4090 that can get anywhere close to its performance. It's unstoppable, and will stay ahead of the pack, as we now know AMD's highest performance graphics card, the RX 7900 XTX, is well and truly an RTX 4080 competitor. This is a vast GPU that packs in 170% more transistors than even the impossibly chomped gay 102 chip that powered the RTX 3090 Ti. And for the most part, it makes the previous flagship card of the Ampere generation look well off the pace. That's even before you get into the equal mix of majesty and black magic that lies behind the new DLSS 3.0 revision designed purely for ADA. Number five, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080. The NVIDIA RTX 4080 is another speed graphics card. It bloody should be for $1,200. And when you take DLSS 3 into account, you are getting on for twice the performance of the similarly priced RTX 3080 from the last generation. Seriously, frame generation is black magic. But reviewing the RTX 4080 is tougher than being Jensen's Spatula Wrangler. Though it's a lot more straightforward now, there's only a 16 gigabytes version, and it doesn't come with some additional 12 gigabytes half-breed trailing it around. During a time of extreme economic difficulty and uncertainty across the globe, it's not a great look for both the main GPU makers to reveal their next-generation graphics cards with the starting price being $900 at best. There will be arguments that the $1,200 RTX 4080's performance over and above the RTX 3080 tie renders it an unqualified success, but I have thoughts on that too. The RTX 4080 comfortably outperforms the similarly priced cards from the previous generation, most notably the $1,200 RTX 3080 tie, and therefore is really hitting that gen on gen performance uplift we crave. But neither of these GeForce cards should ever have been a $1,200 GPU. Number four. AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. Our review RX 7900 XTX sample suffered from an issue. GPU hotspot temperatures exceeding the normal expected range under load. We've since been in contact with AMD about a replacement for retesting, which we've since received, but unfortunately, we've had the same issue strike again. Fun eh? You can check out our reviews for the Asus TUF Gaming Radeon RX 7900 XDX OC Edition and Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 7900 XDX Vapor X, as these cards are entirely unaffected by the issue and better show what sort of performance you can expect from this card spec. Still, the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XDX has a lot going for it. We're used to seeing GPU generations that arrive on smaller process nodes, redesigned architectures, larger caches, reworked shaders, more memory, the list goes on. But all of that, all at once, that's what RDNA 3 delivers. The whole lot in one fell swoop. The RX 7900 XVX is a superb 4K GPU at its original $999 price tag. It's ruling its own segment of the market, and it offers a significant performance boost over what RDNA 2s could muster in a tilled $1,100 RX 6950 XT or $999 RX 6900 XT. It's expensive, but not any dearer than the card it replaces. Number 3. AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT AMD's Radeon RX 7900 XT is a slightly slimmed back version of the Navy 31 GPU and the company's top graphics card the RX 7900 XTX. 
Starting at $899, now dropping below $800, it's therefore offering a slightly cheaper way into the RDNA 3 generation. You could also be forgiven for thinking it's not that much cheaper than the best. The RX 7900 XTX is priced handlingly close at $999. So why would you pick up the cheaper chip of the two? That's a good question. And I'm not sure I have a good answer apart from price. The RX 7900 XT outperforms AMD's previous top card, the RX 6950 XT, in every benchmark I tested and by a good margin too. Considering the RX 6950 XT launched at over $1,000 and now sits around $800, maybe less, that's a point of pride for the RX 7900 XT. Overall, I'd say there are a few things the RX 7900 XT does well. For starters, it appears to be a good upgrade on even the RX 6950 XT, and considering the price difference between the two at launch, that's a good sign of AMD's progression with the RDNA A3 architecture. The reference cooler on this also seems pretty capable for the price, with temperatures running relatively cool considering its performance. Number two, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. The unlaunching and subsequent rebadging and repricing of the RTX 4080 12GB was the best thing to happen to this third tier ADA GPU. Now and forever to be known as the RTX 4070 Ti, this is the card that now makes it impossible to recommend AMD's RX 7900 XT. Possibly the most impressive thing to say about the RTX 4070 Ti is that very regularly, it's level 2 or faster than an RTX 3090. When you think that's the $1,500 GPU of the last generation that looks like a great gen-on-gen -gen uptick in performance, especially when that's at the top 4K resolution. What's maybe less exciting is that when you're just talking in straight rasterized game terms, it's not a whole lot faster than the old cheaper RTX 3080 10GB at 4K. It is faster, most especially when you bring those third gen RT cores into the equation, but it's clear the higher clocks and heftier L2 cache is having to work hard to give it the lead in raw frame rate terms over the older Ampere card. Where it looks far more positive is up against the new AMD RDNA 3 cards, the RX 7900 XTX and RX 7900 XT. It is generally slower than the top Radeon GPU, but against the still more expensive RX 7900 XT, the RTX 4070 Ti regularly posts higher 4K performance. Number one. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 The NVIDIA RTX 4070 is a $100 cheaper RTX 3080. That's the easiest, but probably also the most facile way to describe the green team's graphics card. This is the fourth entry in the notoriously expensive ANA generation of GPUs, and in standard metrics performs as well as the fourth tier card from the Ampere lineup. On the face of it then, it's just a cheaper chip. But it's not just that. The RTX 4070, this smart new NVIDIA card is an RTX 3080 with benefits. This is the first of the ADA graphics cards to utilize the same GPU as the previous release, just with a little of the good stuff cut back to create a more affordable offering. And that also means NVIDIA is able to do something useful with any chip that fails to make the grave as an RTX 4070 Ti, which otherwise uses the full A104 die or a mobile RTX 4080. The RTX 4070 is like a proper graphics card. It's not some monstrous hulk of PCI socket-rending GPU. It's a modest card the size of its RTX 3070 forebear. That makes it a rather cute-looking thing. Well, in terms of scale anyways, at brushed aluminum NVIDIA Founders Edition, frame still looks pleasingly serious. This is the top six best GPU for gaming in 2023. Please make sure to subscribe our channel for these kind of information. Thanks for watching.